Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about what happened last week. Um, <clears throat> so last Monday I had an interview with the director of the sleep clinic, sleep center at the hospital. And I know that I talked a little bit about this, but I can't remember exactly what I told you guys. Um, <clears throat> so I feel like the conversation went really well. Um, overall, the entire experience was very positive for me. And I feel like the director of the sleep lab was very um, interested in me working in the sleep clinic. He asked me a bunch of questions about like my motivation to look into the sleep center and what made me interested in learning more <clears throat> about sleep. And I kind of brought up my neuroscience degree and why I feel like sleep lab is obviously more connected to my neuroscience degree than working in the clinic is. Um, I made sure not to mention anything financial just because I feel like making a lateral move um, because I feel like it is somewhat a lateral move moving from one part of the hospital to another. I don't want to really piss off anybody. Um, <clears throat> by saying that it's financial or saying anything about finances really because um, I feel like things in healthcare shouldn't really be about finances, but when you have CNAs that are getting paid less than what I do and I'm, I've got a lot of responsibilities that even the actual nurses in the clinic um, and I say actual nurses because we do have three LPNs that work in the clinic as well as the other medical assistants and myself that work in the clinic. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, I am a CCMA, um, Certified Clinical Medical Assistant through the NHA. I work as a clinic nurse, but I'm not a nurse, obviously. I am a medical assistant. Um, so like a lot of the things that I'm responsible for doing the LPNs in the clinic don't even do. So like the fact that they get paid over $20 an hour and I get paid $14 an hour is ridiculous. The brand new CNAs with no experience at the hospital that I work at, on the med surge unit, they start out at $18 an hour. On the long-term care unit, they are making more than I am. I'm not sure what the exact number is off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> so yes, the decision to look into possibly working in the sleep center was financial for me, but there were also other motivations behind it. I could see opportunities for advancement. Um, you guys very well know that I am so very much into educational opportunities and I'm constantly looking for ways to challenge myself, things to learn. And I just think it would be overall a good career move and a good financial move for me. Um, <clears throat> so I applied, I actually applied to the same position twice and, um, I can't remember if I told you guys or not, but like you needed nothing other than like a high school diploma or equivalent and they would prefer you to have like six months of patient care experience. Obviously I've been working in patient care since 2016, so I do have quite a bit of experience in patient care. You guys have kind of followed, if you've been on my channel for a while, you've followed like my journey from CNA to phlebotomist, phlebotomist to medical assistant, and hopefully you will be able to follow along with me on my journey from medical assistant to certified sleep technician, certified sleep technician, to registered sleep technician. Well, actually it would go medical assistant to sleep tech, sleep tech to certified sleep technician, certified sleep technician to registered sleep technician. Um, and the hospital would be providing all of that education for me and paying for all of my training and all of that. So I'm definitely, I've been talking about this position as if I already have it because I feel like I want to manifest that into my life. Um, I'm very excited about the potential to make that move to the sleep clinic. I know that it would be a lot of work. I've been doing a lot of research about sleep-related things since meeting with the director. Um, tomorrow's Monday, and on Tuesday, I actually have a second interview that is more of a formal interview 
but there are other supervisors involved. So there's like the supervisor for cardiopulmonary department, there is the lab supervisor, and there's a couple of other people that the clinic, the um, sleep clinic director um, invited so that they had the opportunity to ask me any questions they may have for me and that I had the opportunity to ask them any questions that I may have. I'm just really hoping that the experience is a positive one. I'm gonna go into it with like confidence and hoping beyond hope that they offer me that position. I do think that it helps that um, I have quite a bit of varied experience because when I was talking with the director of the sleep clinic, um, initially with our first meeting last week, he had brought up the fact that he thought all of my varied experiences and my um, education was very interested and it piqued his interest in getting to know me more as a potential employee. So I'm really, I'm very nervous, don't get me wrong. You guys know that I have awful anxiety or if you don't, I have awful anxiety. And so like ever since Monday, I have been constantly like thinking about what, what should I say if they ask me this? What do I need to look up to see like if they're gonna test me with these questions? I need to be able to formulate responses like on the spot. And that is what I constantly do before any interview that I've ever had. I am constantly thinking in my head, okay, well, what if they ask me this? What would I say in response? Um, or, you know, what, how should I frame something so that even if it may come off as being negative, it's actually a positive. So like when I was working agency and not really working a staff CNA job, I had an interview for um, a CNA position as a staff CNA and I f like flipped my agency CNA experience um, into a positive because like she was saying that it looked like I had worked at a bunch of different places and I was talking about like agency work and um, <clears throat> flipped it into that giving me the opportunity to experience different types of patients and care for different types of patients with different varying levels of need medically. And so like you have to be able to spin things in a way that benefits you and makes you sound better. And I think that ever since last week, I've really been trying to figure out ways to do that. I will definitely keep you guys updated as to how things go on Tuesday. I really hope that they offer me the position. He did say that they had like multiple other applicants, but they wanted to give me a chance first because I am an internal applicant. And also they were very interested in like my resume and my experience. And he said before I left the meeting with him on Monday of last week, he did say that he can usually get a feel for how things would be based on his initial meeting with people. And he said that he feels like I would like specifically fit what they are looking for because one, I love education. I love learning things. I'm constantly trying to challenge myself. They do a lot of education over there. Um, two, I'm very interested in like the brain and how things work. And we were talking about like different research studies and things like that. So while there is a lot of pressure, with this on myself, especially like I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. I'm also trying not to like overdo it. I'm trying to stay positive and go into this with the positive mindset. I just really, I think that it would be beneficial for me to switch to the sleep clinic. I love what I do currently, don't get me wrong. I love working in the clinic. I love interacting with my patients on a daily basis, but one, I don't get paid enough. Two, I think it really sucks that I have to travel like 60 miles um, two to three days a week, potentially more considering that a lot of the other employees will not travel to other locations. They aren't willing to get blood draw trained or anything like that. And I think that's stupid. I think everybody should have to do the same and it's just really frustrating, but that's a whole nother video for another time. If you guys are interested, let me know and I can make that video just kind of explaining my feelings and thoughts on that aspect of things. But um, like I said, tomorrow's Monday and I'm actually at a different satellite clinic that I'm not normally at. 
I have it. Well, I've been there twice in the entire time that I've worked at the clinic, which is almost seven months. And I've been to this, this other clinic I'm going to tomorrow twice in that period of time. But I'm going there because the nurse that normally works there is going out to the clinic I normally work at which they won't let me go out there because they don't have a secretary and the other nurse is also trained in the secretarial registration side of things so that will be the last time that she like the last time that there won't be a secretary out there so anytime after this I would be able to be sent out there um so I'm hoping that it isn't too bad tomorrow. I know I had a lot of computer issues and things like that the last time I was at that clinic. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, but normally I would be at our main clinic on Mondays. So I probably would have done the interview on Monday of next week, but um, since I'm not there, we're doing it on Tuesday. So Monday, tomorrow I will be at that clinic. And then Tuesday at lunchtime, I have that interview and I'm hoping it goes well. I hope I have positive news to share with you guys on Tuesday. So <sighs> stay tuned for that if you're interested. And yeah, I will definitely keep you guys updated. I'm just really hoping that it turns out in my favor because um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to like spending the winter traveling 60 miles to go out to the one clinic a minimum of two days a week potentially more um so yeah anyways that is all i have for this video i hope you guys are having a wonderful day and i will talk to you guys next time